The B-movie maniacs often wonder what happens if you're the son of a communist dictator who is worried about the state of the film industry under your repressive regime. The films made are too lifeless, dull, unimaginative. How do you turn things around and show the rest of the world that your entertainment is best entertainment? Well, you kidnap a popular film director from a neighboring country and force him to make movies like the one we review tonight because we watched Pulgasari on B Movie Mania! 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 B-movie Mania. B-movie Mania. B-movie Mania. <laughs> God, that's terribly racist. <laughs> Welcome to the crossroads of camp, the bastion of the bizarre, the place where low budgets meet high praise. Yes, it's B-Movie Mania. And now, B-Movie Maniacs, here are your hosts, the cream of the crap, the connoisseurs of cult, your cinematic creepy uncles, Paul Brooks, Mike Hayes, Jason Hulls, and Crazy Chris Hudson. Hello, everyone. I'm Chris Hudson. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, with me are uh, the usual gang, Jason Hulls up. Oh, Hello. Boy. Oh, boy. Already. Already. <laughs> Paul Brooks up. No. <laughs> no, not doing it. Good uh. evening. <laughs> and... Everyone's favorite uh, B-movie maniac, Mike Hazer. Oh God! That sounds I, terrible. Chris. That I sounds Chris. so bad. But if you've seen the movie, you would understand. It's probably not just the movie. It's probably just the language of the movie. <laughs> probably. Well, we're talking about Pulgasari, the 1985 North Korean blockbuster. What 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 is it? What does it mean to be a blockbuster in North Korea? That people have seen it. <laughs> Aren't they forced to? <laughs> I think Not they were anymore. forced to. It's illegal now. <laughs> hey, Chris. <laughs> yeah. I want to apologize in advance. I'm on a juice cleanse right Uh-oh. now, as you can God. see. Oh. Well, so oh. I don't. <sighs> Is that a North Korean juice cleanse? Oh no. I'm I'm gonna have to get up a couple times to go pee. I'm really sorry. Oh my Why God. You, you should just record again in the shitter like you used to. I did think about it, but it's very uh, echoey in there. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I hope Pulgasari is not waiting for you in the toilet. Oh, God. He'll eat all your iron. (laughs) So, hey, let's just get all this out of the way while Paul is occupied. And we'll just get right out, kind of. This movie is really weird, but not as weird as the -the behind-the-scenes story of this movie. Oh, yeah, for sure. So, before we all all get into that, how about we... uh, Let's do some uh, quick takes. Quick takes! All right, Paul, how about you give us your quick take? You know, Godzilla has that classic roar whenever you hear him. <laughs> Paul Gasari, is it just me, or did he kind of sound like um, a constipated cow? <laughs> like a painful scream? I yeah. can't even remember what the yeah. sound was. I guess most cows sound constipated, though, so he sounded like a cow. <laughs> can, can we play the sound here so I remember what, what it sounds like? Mm-hmm. Thanks. All right, Mike. Do you remember now? <laughs> I do remember now, yes. Mike? I just got to say, roll over Godzilla. <laughs> mm. There's a new dog in town. Wow. <laughs> That's good. Jay? Surprising uh, in a number of ways. Uh, we'll get into more later. But it was it was a surpri- <laughs> it was surprising. <laughs> I did not expect certain things that happened in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very tease of a quick take. Yeah. Ooh. It was a quick of a quick take. Quick tease. You can't go quick when you're talking Paul Gasari. <laughs> no. This I go slow. This this movie plods on and on like Paul Gasari <laughs> behind his army. What what is the runtime on this anyway? 135. <laughs> Yeah, 95 minutes. Okay. Yeah. It felt like three hours. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a long hour and a half. It's a slog. Right up front, <laughs> may may I introduce a couple of drinking rules that I came up with while watching this? <laughs> drinking rules! You just need two. There's two drinking rules. <laughs> oh, One, God. 
drink every time someone says Polkasari. Oh, you will die. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> And then rule two is take a shot every time Polkasari changes size. <laughs> that's good. And that that's is real good. That's either by intent or by looking at it and going, hmm, I think he's a different size now, even though he's not supposed to be. Mike, the only uh, the only slight slight tweak I would make to that rule, mm-hmm. the first rule, mm-hmm. I don't think they actually quite say Polgasari in the film. They say it kind of yeah, differently. Yeah, yeah. Well, you they, gotta... they switch it up. Jay, how do they say it? Polgasari! Polgasari! <laughs> but they do say Polgasari, too, when they're calling for him, when they're shouting. And I don't know Korean, so I don't know what that means. But I think that's kind of a, maybe like a an addition to the name, like you might say, like out of respect or out of familiarity or something. They add that to him when they're okay. hollering. I'm not sure. I'm not a doctor. You really made that up right now. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Like I'm pretty sure you did. I'm I'm no expert, but in Japan, like you might say someone's name, someone's son, which would be like Oh, so in in Korea, or, they say they say uh. Well, in this situation, I'm not saying always. I'm saying maybe when they're shouting for someone or whatever reason, they might say that. I don't know. Mike, I just have I just have to say in my 2 years in South Korea, when I was in army, no one ever put uh after my name. So either it's not a thing, or they just didn't. Yeah, there's a reason They just for didn't that. respect me. Or perhaps in and, North Korea. Oh yeah. Or maybe they weren't familiar with you. Sorry, keep going. This is this is a could jump be bit. could be. Well, that gets me brings me into it because uh, maybe it's a later thing because let's this movie kind of starts out in kind of a like a medieval kind of age. So this is kind of. In the same time period, you'd see like a samurai or a ninja movie in Japan. It's feudal Korea. Feu- yeah, so feudal feudal Korea. Like My wife say. said as soon as this came on, she said it looks like it was made on a flip phone. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was 1985, and they didn't have quite the film technology they have now. Well, yeah, I wonder if there is a pretty clean version out there somewhere, because I feel like the Amazon version was... Piss poor. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good now, way to say it. I believe yeah. the only version available is a VHS release that Japan, someone in Japan did, and that's what uh, everything else is from. Because no one owns the rights to this thing. Yeah, I was that's, wondering. Yeah, that's so, true. So that uh, Sprocket Films, they uh, you see the logo at the beginning. They don't actually own the rights to this. No, they're, that, I only I tried looking up who Sprocket Films was, and I found nothing. <laughs> Kim Jong Il, I guess, owns Kim, the. Yeah. Like, all right, Hudson. Anyway, what happens so, yeah, in this thing? yeah. So okay, so we start off in a little village, and there's a black. Smith and his family, and I thought it was just going to oh. be a night. I thought this movie uh. was just going to be like taking place uh. on a little set. Uh. <laughs> What's uh. happening? Uh. It's, the, it's the blacksmiths uh. all working, uh. working the forge. Uh. They're toiling away, <laughs> twiddling away on their uh. on their iron oh, Mike, hard. I that's toiling. Oh. <laughs> Toiling away oh. on their iron hard slabs oh. of metal. I thought this was going to be like Kung Pao. The audio at first was just so Kung Pao. I really wanted it to be that. Yeah, although at this point, I really could not wait to see how uh, these blacksmiths glorified the great North Korean worker. You know, actually, yeah, can I, can I say something about that? This is something that was probably the most surprising aspect of the film for me. Is that the government... I think I know what you're going to say, Paul. Well... Can I say it? Yeah, go, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay. What really surprised me is I just think I know what you're going to say. The- I'm just, I just think I know what you're going to say. <laughs> Shut up and let me say it. All right. This is going to be a long episode, isn't it? The government in this the film. The soundtrack's really good. <laughs> we'll get to the soundtrack later. Oh. God damn it. <laughs> Sorry, Paul. That might no, not that's have not what, what I was going to say. say. Okay. All right, Paul. North Korea, of course, we all know is... Brutal. Best it's, Korea. A, it's a horrible place. It's a it's a horrible government. So I was really surprised that that the government in this film, in this North Korean film, is portrayed as a just a bunch of assholes. Oh yeah. Oh totally. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I, I mean, you would think that they would portray the government as as your saviors, as as these people that you look up to. So it was really quite the opposite of what I was expecting in that respect. Yeah, I wrote down that I was I I wrote that uh, Kim watching this would be rooting for the oppressors and hoping that the poor people die. <laughs> right. Yeah, I did not get any sense that this was at all a propaganda film. I I was no. 
trying to figure that out myself. I think we all obviously were trying to figure out whose side is what. Yeah. Um, but I, I read a theory that uh, Polgasari is supposed to represent un, untethered capitalism. And oh, so yeah. it starts out helping, but then it becomes the enemy of the people. And it ruins everything. That, which that makes the movie sound a lot more exciting than it really is. The thing about this movie is that, like, it's well made, but not what I expected or necessarily wanted. <laughs> but they really knew what they were doing. And it, there are some very impressive elements of the film itself, yeah, we'll, I think. We'll get, to, we'll, we'll get to those set pieces in a little bit. But for now, we're stuck in the village. And it goes on for, like, 25 minutes. It's just slow-ass... What's this blacksmith doing? The governor's coming around. There's some bandits in the mountains somewhere. Well, no, it's the, the, the people in the village are the bandits. Oh. Indy, Indy is the leader of the bandits, and, like, Uncle finds out the swords in a bunch of grass, and he's oh, like, yeah. ah, you, you fucker, uh, that, whatever. <laughs> and then the government comes because the bandits were being bad boys somewhere else. Right, and the, and the blacksmith is forced to then make weapons for the government to kill the bandits who he is, like, <clears throat> related to. Yeah. yeah. And just a quick little uh, side note for our listening audience. This film is in Korean. There are no English subtitles, so you're not going to hear too many little audio snippets within this episode. Apologies. Not not to correct you, but there, there are subtitles. It's yeah. just not dubbing. <laughs> Right. Sorry. Yes, yes, that's what I meant yes. to say. No that's, dubbing. Yeah. I knew what dubs. you meant, and I wouldn't have corrected normally. But being an audio medium, I thought I would share. Right. And also, and also to correct again, I was really surprised by this. This was my first indication that the movie wasn't going the way like it would be propaganda. Is that why are there bandits? Because the people are starving, and we all know that North Korea has had several problems with uh, famine. Yeah. There's <laughs> so. a real. T- <laughs> Real twist of in turn of this beginning setup for the movie because the bandits are there. The government comes because the bandits are doing trouble and make the bandits make weapons for the government to kill the bandits. And in order to make the weapons for the government, the the government's making the bandits use all of their like cooking and farming equipment <laughs> so they can make the weapons to kill the bandits for the government. It's like it's so North it's Korea. Bonkers. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean that's a, it's a decent setup though. I mean it, it's Oh yeah. It's a good dramatic setup. Yeah. And really all the bandits, well all the villagers really make instead of weapons they make a Polgasari. <laughs> oh, <well>. oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The uh, the uncle, I believe, they he refuses, right? Like to to make he gives he gives the garden tools back to the people. Yeah, and they hide a bunch of iron and stuff, and then like the government leader guy, he gets mad when they discover this, and they cane him because they think he hid all the iron. <laughs> and he's sentenced to prison with no food. I'm just trying to get to the part where Polgasari shows up. So yeah, we sorry. gotta get that. This is oh, good. Yeah. So uncle's in yeah. prison, and then there's like a food fight. And there's yeah, the food fight and the he's hunger strike and stuff. And uh, but he just he's on a hunger strike until his daughter comes and ta- throws some rice into his cell. Yeah, Amy. Yeah, Amy. That's and then it's, she's Amy the, and she's the main character. Yeah, was she the main character? It jumped around well, so Indy much. Well, Indy and Amy are, are really yeah. kind of yeah, on the Amy. same level. Right. Yeah. And then Anna is, you know, second tier there. The, the oh, son yeah. or brother. So they chuck some rice at the blacksmith in his jail cell, and instead of eating it... <laughs> yes. He plays with his food. He play, plays with his food. <laughs> and he makes just the cutest little monster. Oh, my it's, God. Fits right in the palm of your hand. Wait, was that was that supposed to be made out of rice? Yeah. Yes. It was made out yeah. of rice. <laughs> It was black. Yeah, well, well, Paul, he had to hold the but he had to hold the rice together with something. <laughs> oh, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> but okay, rice. but here's something that I I didn't quite understand. Maybe you guys can help me out a little bit. Uh, we see the uncle carefully crafting this cute little Polgasari <laughs> yeah. in it's his so cell. Cute. That is that is so the adorable. creation of Polgasari, correct? Yeah. Yes. That's, yeah. Well, well the yep. the. Physical creation, not yeah. the spiritual creation. Previously, though, before he gets captured and everything, he mentions Polgasari. So is it this sort of legend that, that was already existing and then he decided to actually create it? Or, or what's the deal? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. It's, it is a famous legend in Korea, the Bulgasari. Which the creature actually looks nothing like the one in the monster, to be honest. Um, oh, so it is. It's a real. It's a real, real legend. legend. Uh, Just like you know how Godzilla is a real legend in Japan. Yeah, 
Yeah. Like, so the real monster has the... There's a couple different descriptions, but the main thing that the through fare for it is it has the the body of a bear and the head of an elephant. And these pictures are bonkers. Uh, we should post some. Let's post we some. We will, yeah. We Which is not what we get in the movie, and I'll let someone else describe the movie monster. But I, to be honest, I love the movie monster. <laughs> yeah. Bulbasari oh, yeah. sounds like something out of uh, Crash Bandicoot. Oh, I hope it is. <laughs> Uh, okay, so to continue with the plot here, um, the after the mini Pulgasari is created, out of the food and the last of his true heart, he prays for the Pulgasari to help people, and then he dies. But I really have to really, I can't stress enough how cute this little Pulgasari figurine is. I would yeah, love he's a cute one little guy. if I could get one. Oh, especially yeah. when, when he gets that bloodbath. <laughs> yes, I, I enjoyed the origin of the Pulgasari. Yeah. So, Jay, why don't you describe oh, the origin of the Pulgasari? Um, Amy is at home mending a shirt, and she sticks her finger with a needle. And blood gets on the little Pulgasari, and he comes to life. And he starts eating needles. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> Just chowing yes. down on those needles. It cuts to him. It, it, it's a man in, like... The ba- there's got to be a couple different rubber suits because yeah, there's there a couple there different, different iterations ones. of this Pulgasari. And so there's there's the ma- a man in a rubber suit in a giant, not drawer, but kind of, right? Like there's a giant <laughs> yeah. pair of scissors near him and a giant... It is amazing. It's very cool. <laughs> um, I like that they in the next scene they, they decide... Well, they love it, for one. And then in the yeah. next scene, they cover it up in bed with them. <laughs> he's yeah, he's and they, like, in. tuck him he's in. He's tucked in. He's still so cute. It's <laughs> it's up to his chin. It's up to... The little blanket's up to his chin, and he's just... He's just snoozing away. But then... And this is maybe my favorite part in the movie, in terms of, like, I, can't, I wish I was there on the day of filming. He gets out of bed early, crawls up on top of, like, the doorknob, and chews through the metal lock and eats the lock, and then the door swings open. But all of this is not done with puppets. This is not done with a figurine. It is done with the man in the rubber suit on a yeah. giant doorknob with giant locks and a door that actually swings open. That it is door amazing. was huge. Pretty great. Oh, my God. It's so amazing. He looks like... Well, no one's talked about what he looks like. He looks like a baby Godzilla, effectively. Like, he kind of looks yeah. like a cute baby Godzilla. You can tell he's going to have big horns when he grows up, but now he's got little stubby horns. He's got little baby horns. <laughs> I yeah. got to pee. I'll be right back. <laughs> Bye-bye, Paul. Right. Like yourself out, Paul. Oh, but what do you think is actually happening in Paul's bathroom? Pugasaria! That's what I think is happening. <laughs> okay. All right, sorry, go ahead. The next day, the siblings find Pugasari in the forge eating metal. And I think this is the point where they actually put together that it's the Pugasari. Yeah. Yeah, because the, the legend is that the the Pulgasari eats iron, so they, they know the legend, and so they like, oh, shoot, that's a Pulgasari. All right. Yeah. I don't know what they thought it was before that. I don't know. Just a lot of cool <laughs> mythical cute, creatures. cute little guy. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. But I guess this is where they decide that Indy is going to be executed. Yeah. Is so, it? Uh, yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah, yeah right yeah, after yeah, this, yeah. yeah. Um, they're going to they're gonna cut his head off. <laughs> this is where we get some action out of Pulgasari, too. <laughs> this is awesome. As a little tiny Pulgasari. <laughs> yeah, still, this is a, definitely a puppet right here. I'm back. Paul, what He's, happens next? <laughs> Where are we? Uh, uh, Indy is Indy's about to get his head chopped off. Oh, well, this is maybe the best part of the movie, in my opinion. <laughs> John Oliver agrees with you, Paul. Indy is about to get his head chopped off, and Paul Gasari comes flying out of nowhere and just takes a giant bite out of the sword oh, that so is about to chop off Indy's head, and it's great. But it's, it's great because he's, he's a puppet at this point. Yeah. It's so great. And then great someone effect. shoves the puppet into someone else's face, and it's very good. <laughs> yes, he takes a bite out of the guy's face. That's awesome. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> it's amazing. It is the cutest. Charles Band would give his entire like body to make a, a puppet this cute. <laughs> you know, that puppet probably exists somewhere. Uh, it's been a long time. It may be, yeah, it's probably buried with Kim Jong-il. Probably. He's probably in the suit. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of that, you guys know who was in the suit, right? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we we're going to get to that. Well, do you want, let's just do it now. Let's who just, was might it? as well do it now, yeah. Who was it, Chris? Well, it was... <laughs> okay, we haven't gotten too into the making of this movie right now, but let's just say it was... A lot of this movie was made under duress and trickery. And so Kim Jong-il somehow fooled the production team of the the 1980s Godzilla movies and they got the actual guy 
who played Godzilla in the eighties. It is fucking Satsuma in that outfit. What? Yeah. No oh, yeah. fucking they joke. They tricked the shit out of this uh, <laughs> the Godzilla team. They thought they were going to do a job wow. in China, and nope, we just landed in North Korea. But supposedly, <laughs> cow. It's, it, there's an interview with him where he talks about it at some like Comic Con, and like he he speaks highly of the movie. He prefers it over the oh, yeah. uh, Return yeah. of Godzilla movie. He, he that's fair. Yeah. yeah, well, that's fair it, actually. And he he talks about how Kim Jong Il like hid them from people so that it, so that they could make the movie and like lavish them with gifts and riches, which is terrible because of the rest of the country was you know under st- st- crazy duress. Like it's this, it's it's insane. It's 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 fucking Godzilla, literally Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, if you're gonna get a guy to play your monster, you go for the best. Yeah, I think that I'm probably the uh, biggest kaiju fan uh, in the group here. I think that's fair to say. Yeah, yeah probably. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I didn't know that, Mike. So that's pretty interesting. But he's <laughs> right. Polgasari is better than uh, the 1984 Godzilla. <laughs> 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 I think here's where we really get the first shot of Pulgasari as the uh, the man of the suit right after the uh, the execution scene because he's just chowing down on all the weapons in the village and, yeah, and, all the iron and yeah. the government the government soldiers are trying to like they're like they don't know what's going on they try to just stab him and he just just the swords break over him the arrows spears are breaking off of his skin and he doesn't and give a he, shit He's just walking around. <laughs> they just bust through a wall. Um, so the Pulgasari leaves the town, and the siblings, yep. they're calling out for Pulgasari, and they find him in the wilderness and in a <laughs> creek, and he's playing with minnows, and they go down <laughs> near him, and it looks like he splashes them and wants to play in the creek, <laughs> but then he just takes them garden tools and walks into the woods. His... <laughs> His, like, what do you call it? awareness of humans and interaction with humans is the best fucking thing. This yeah. is why I think this movie's better than any Godzilla movie. It is so well, fucking you know, I, good. I don't, I'm not aware of any kaiju movie. I'm a pretty big fan, like I said. Sure. But I don't know of anyone, any other movie who has used this concept so well, where you start with a monster that's just a little tiny thing, <laughs> yeah. and so then he cute. gradually keeps growing. It's actually really cool the concept yeah. of it. Yeah, because yeah, he yeah. so he leaves this town and he is about human sized. When they go to yes. like find him, he's about their size. When he's playing with the minnows. Yes. yes. Well, and uh, this is about the point where we're about thirty five minutes into it, and I noted that I could actually use a little more Paul Gasari in the movie. At this that's point, that's pretty common, though. Also, with, yeah, with a lot of kaiju I know. movies, you don't see him for a while. Now, the, the we introduce here also the next guy up the food chain was he? He was the king, right? The king, yeah, yeah. So the, the guy with the, the awesome hat. Yeah. So the governor yeah. dies in the in the attack, and then yeah, then we get to the king. He's all angry, and who will fight this Paul Gasari? Mm-hmm. And he loses the first battle at the mountain, right? Oh like, yeah, oh. They're gonna they're gonna go to the rebels and where they're gonna they're gonna surround it and wait for the rebels to starve. Yeah, this is probably and, my favorite part. Yeah, one of the rebels offers to sneak out and get food. Oh wait, no, no, no. Before this, we've got the scene where they're just chucking logs at the army. <laughs> yeah, logs well, and rocks. A lot of log chucking and goddamn logs, logs. There are a. a Oh, it's a fucking lot of logs. They're just coming down, and, <laughs> and there's no way no one died making this movie because they're, they're dropping logs. Not. They're dropping logs on like people. Paul Brooks. <laughs> oh my god, they were log jamming. <laughs> log jamming. <laughs> but then they they then like the government eventually captures Amy, and then Polgasari goes to save her and gets her out. And then you see Polgasari running. They show these scenes where the the, the, <laughs> the farmers are charging with a group you know, all together. Yes. Like you see, and there's this first scene you see him in battle. He's about the size of a human, and he is like prancing along in that fucking suit with everyone else. It is so fucking good. Yeah, he's at the head of the charge, and they keep feeding it weapons, right? Like so, he keeps yeah. getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, because yeah, because after that scene, it cuts to another scene, and he is. Giant! <laughs> yes. He goes from man size to full blown kaiju size pretty yeah. quick. Basically, in a montage. Um, one thing I did like too, which makes sense now that we're talking about it, the villains somehow knew the origin story of Polgasari and that it followed Amy's commands. 
So that's why yeah, they conspire I, to kidnap her. But if he's a, if Paul Gasari's a legend, that might make sense that they go, oh, this is a Paul Gasari. We kind of know. So that makes that that makes some sense to me. But I didn't really understand how they connected the fact that Amy was giving him the commands. Hey, they were spying on him a lot and stuff, or maybe they know because he saves her like two or three times in the movie, doesn't or, he? Or, or like, maybe, maybe maybe our villains are just that goddamn smart. Could be. <laughs> All their plans were s- really brilliant. They were so brilliant and totally worked every single time. Well, what was that first plan? <laughs> the first one was to capture Amy, and they forced Pogasari to get into a giant cage. It's oh, I so love this good. part. It's so good. I love this part. <laughs> the biggest goddamn cage oh in the history God. of mankind, which they somehow had to have built in like under 24 hours and it's like <laughs> the, way taller than Polgasari hey, is and t- Polgasari is very tall. Paul, it sounds like you were you, it sounds like you doubt the devotion of the North Korean worker. The workforce in North Korea <laughs> yes. is amazing. I love it. They put they hold a sword to Amy's throat and they make Polgasari get in the cage. Like he's a dog just like get get <laughs> yeah, get in there. So he does though and he gets in the cage. They set it on fire, and I just like I'm like, this is who, the guy who played Godzilla in that suit. That was not safe working conditions oh, for him. No, no. <laughs> everything is on fire around. I him. don't care what the force perspective on that was. Like he was near too much fire. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I thought that was actually kind of a sad scene. I I, I was feeling for Paul Gasari. Yeah, it right was a there. real yeah. Iron Giant situation. I thought. Yeah. But no, I I love this part next because when he bursts out of the burning wreckage. <laughs> now. <laughs> he's not only huge, he's also f- burning hot red and oh pissed God. off. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's like apparently made of iron, maybe? Or something? Now? I think he's supposed to be I made of iron. Because yeah. he was hot for like hours after that, too. Like however length of time it was, he was still hot to the touch, as we saw. So so what does he do when he gets pissed off? <laughs> Dude, he... Well, okay, I, if I'm correct... River. Yeah, he jumps in the river and makes it boil, so he cooks all the soldiers. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. he does. Oh, it's so cool. He's got, he's got soldier soup coming up, baby. You think Paul Gasari only has one tactic for beating an army? No. He's got no, them all. no. No. <laughs> oh, my he God. He will cook your army. So that plan backfired pretty quickly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I see what you did. Fired. That's good. <laughs> Pogasari is always down to help the army, and I have to say I love the 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 scenes where the army's marching because you get the foreground just all these people just walking, and then in the background it's just Pogasari from the waist up oh, just cruising along behind it's them. So fucking good. It does not look good. It looks so good, Paul. Shut your fucking mouth. It's amazing. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, I was so tickled every time those shots showed up. I was just so excited. I love they happen so many times. I had a question for you, Mike, that I wanted to make sure I asked you tonight. Uh huh. Who would you take in a fight? Oh. Paul Gasari or young Gary? Oh, fuck. Like, who would I take <laughs> on my team or against? What do you mean? Who would win in a fight between, oh, between the two? Paul Gasari and young oh, Gary? Oh, Paul Gasari. You think so? No, Polkasar's like, got those sweet ass horns. Me and Mike used to do a show called Drunk Movie Reviews, and the very first episode was a review <laughs> of a South Korean monster movie called Reptilian, and the name of the monster was Young Gary. Oh. So they got a little bit of a North Korea South Korea rivalry going. I mean, on. I mean, oh. Young Gary had some sweet ass abs. I mean, don't get me wrong. Those, oh those yeah, were and he had that sweet monocle. Board. But I think what would happen? He did have that sweet monocle. But I do think that that Polgasari would use those washboard abs in the boiling hot river to to clean up some uh, government uh, soldiers. You just rub them you're, up. You're on probably that. you're probably right. And then they might kiss. Yeah, kind of a unification yeah. of North and South Korea. Let's talk about the next plan that they'd come up oh, with God. to uh, no, no, stop no, no, Polgasari. I, I want to talk about the slash Vic about Young Gary and Polgasari. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> <laughs> After we talk about the pit, Mike. Oh, okay, okay. So, yeah, so the next plan is to dig a big fucking pit in, what, 20 minutes? Yeah, well, yes. Because that army is on Chris, the move. it sounds like you're doubting the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the dedication of the North Korean yeah. worker. <laughs> well, I'd like to point out how urgent and quickly they had to do it because the farmers decided to attack the government like, not wait. They were like, we got Paul, uh, Paul Gasari. Let's just go. Let's fucking take this, these government <laughs> fuckers on. And so the government sees that they're coming, and they're like, all right, let's build a pit. <laughs> <laughs> and, Chris, they shoot. I have a question for you. They yeah. shoot, uh, like, these rocket spears at oh, Paul yeah, Gasari. Yeah. 
And yeah. most of the time, they don't have an effect. One does hit him in the eye, and that kind of gets him. <laughs> right in the eye. Was that the early version of the Law Rocket, Chris? You were in <laughs> I, Army. I, Can you? And you were in Korea. Can you talk yeah. about that? I, I believe so, yeah. It was uh, an early form of rocketry, I guess. So if you were in the North Korean Army, you, you might have been one of those guys. I probably would have been, yeah. I mean... I was air defense in the modern day arm in the modern day army, but in in ancient North Korea army, I would have been kaiju defense. Hmm, interesting. No, no question about it. Hey, Chris, uh, when you were in South Korea, how much talk did you hear about the Pulgasari Yungari rivalry? Was yeah. that something that people talked about a lot? You know, I didn't really hear that much about it. I mean, I was there a few years after Pulgasari was made, but I don't. When when was Yungari? Was that a more recent a, thing? I think it's, it's also a, a historical event. I mean, was was it a rivalry, or maybe you heard more about a romance between the two? Hmm. <laughs> that, <laughs> they, that's what they didn't want us to talk about at all. Were they, they a were hot couple? To keep that. They were a hot couple that <laughs> you were a little jealous of, but couldn't really couldn't really talk about because it was forbidden. I bet they had one of those like, those combined names like Yungasari or something like that, and they're on all the, the <laughs> yes, periodicals. Nice. I think uh, Paul Gary. Oh, Paul Gary is really good too. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys want to watch Mike's review of. Reptilian, the young Gary movie, or as Mike likes to call him, gay guy. <laughs> hey, uh, no. That's what you call them. I know. We'll it post was... a link down below. God damn it. Anyway, suffice to say, though, they dig that hole really fast. Yeah, and it's a huge fucking hole. And, and, and not just that. I mean, the, the, the pit really isn't the astonishing part. The astonishing no. part is that when Polgasari shows up, he falls into the pit. Yeah, and well, then is bombarded with sixty million rocks. <laughs> Wait, can we can we step it back for a second, Paul? I want to talk about these rocks real bad, but there's a reason he fell into the pit, which we cannot gloss over. All right, do you not recall the government hiring a witch to exercise Paul Gasari? <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. Oh, gods. <laughs> Yeah, that's a thing. Someone knew that that hole wasn't going to be enough. <laughs> like, and the hole is not a hole. It's a fucking canyon. It is oh, and monstrous. There, which, that, there's a lot of dancing in this movie, too. Surpri surprising yeah. amount of dancing. Yeah, it's, joy it's a joyous country. It's a joyous people. Um, but yeah, so so she, like, it works. The exorcism works on him, sort of. And it, enough to make him fall into this pit. And then, Paul... Then let's talk about the loud as fuck 40 seconds of uninterrupted <laughs> smashing rock sound. I timed it. It's 40 fucking seconds. <laughs> yeah, they're just like, he's in the pit, go! And they release gigantic mountain boulders that are somehow careening down into this pit. Oh, it's insane. D uh, uh, no editing note. Don't play the sound of the rocks because it's fucking awful. <laughs> I was just going to say, should I play all 40 seconds all of the rocks? Maybe the if rocks. you can, but real quiet. <laughs> <laughs> underneath in the background. Yeah, just 40 seconds in the background. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll put it underneath Lloyd's outro as he's uh, <laughs> talking about our face. There you go. That's perfect. So I think at this point, the movie oh. just cuts again and we see everyone back all the the bandits back in their base back in their camp well this is the part where, uh this was a kind of a shocking part moment yes. actually yes. because indy gets captured again yeah and they're going to execute him by hanging him this time so don't worry paul gasari is going to get him nope nope what do you nope. mean wait whoa 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 what do you mean indy dies no yeah. indy dies i'm sorry mike indy that that, no, that was genuinely like, whoa, okay. Yeah. Yeah. He was one of the main guys, and he bites it. Then the credits roll, end of the movie. <laughs> no, this is when the when the king, th when the general throws a party. Yeah. Amy Ooh. dresses up like a prosty. <laughs> <laughs> Why would they send such a beautiful woman to bring us booze? So uh, so Amy, she's she sneaks into the party in a attempt to find what happened to Pulgasari, I guess. This scene is so badass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So like so like the like the advisor or something recognizes her and yes and then she gets over the burial and she cuts herself 
Well, they're like threatening her, and she yeah. she goes she goes stand back, or I'll do it. Like pulls his knife out, and, like she's gonna cut herself. Like I, I didn't get it at first. I was like, wait a minute, what does that even mean? She's gonna kill herself for them? I don't know. And then she cuts her arm like fucking hardcore, and then bleeds <laughs> onto the rocks, and the rocks start just the bubbling. <laughs> Guess he's about to crash the party. Yep, glowing lights it's, come out. Man, Polgasari jumps out, like explodes <laughs> out of these rocks and lands on the ground. And it is one of the coolest shots in cinematic history. <laughs> like the when he la- when he lands back down and it's juxtaposed against like this temple building on the right, and he's down, he lands down on the left, and it's like real dark and blue. It's fucking dope as shit. <laughs> when when Paul Gasari smashes the sets in this movie, it looks really cool. I mean, they built these big, <laughs> yeah, castles for yeah. Paul Gasari to walk it's through. It's insane. Yeah. Well, I was gonna say before he goes to where the king lives, we've got one more battle. Mm-hmm, yep. Mm-hmm. With the new super secret weapons that some sort of artisan has been working on. You mean lion gun and general gun? <laughs> lion gun <Yeah>. and general <laughs> gun. <laughs> I was confused because they said they said, "Hey, we got some guy making a secret weapon. It's a giant iron cylinder filled with explosives." And I thought, "Ooh, they made a special sneaky treat for Polgasari. They got this big <laughs> long piece of iron. They're gonna put explosives in. He's gonna eat it, and then it blows up." I thought that was a great idea. No, I was I was I was a little confused too because they said that the weapon was so powerful that it would turn a mountain to ash. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, whoa. Yeah, but then they start using it, and it's just sort of like, eh. Some, no, you there's... know what happens? They shoot it into Paul Gasari's mouth, and he yeah. spits fireballs back at them. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. <laughs> and he beats his way through the wall and destroys the guns. It's and so that's great. awesome. I think that's the first building, the first castle he crushes because it's like, it's so cool. Like when he pounds his fist down on it, you see the individual tiles on that roof like bounce yeah. and move and fall in the <laughs> dust, and it's fucking yeah, and cool. It's a it's a good uh, like the editing there was pretty cool. Where you know we were talking about Paul Gasari smashing through the castle, and they're cutting to the interior of the castle where the king is, and they're just cutting back and forth as Paul Gasari is smashing his way in to get the king. It's pretty cool. And yeah, and the king tries to hide, but Polgasari yeah. knows right where he's hiding. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and stomps him flat. Yeah, yeah. crushes him. <laughs> he's smooshed. There you go, Mike. End of the movie credits roll. No, there's a big party because the farmers won. <laughs> but then we quickly cut back to a sad scene. <laughs> oh. It's so weird. It's a weird cut because it's like a big party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then it's this quick cut to like Polgasari looking real bummed because he's real hungry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love how they give him lion gun. He just like yeah. takes it in his big paw <laughs> and just shoves it in his mouth. Yes, this is where the uh, an interesting twist happens though, because Amy starts to wonder if they've created an evil god, because now Polgasari has no one to fight. He's just hungry. He's got nothing to do but eat. <clears throat> well, and and then she just wonders. Uh, I kind of have this written down saying, uh, but now their savior has become their enemy. To survive, Pulgasari will have to make war upon other countries and eat their iron. But then the whole world would be at war, and this will be the fall of humanity. Kind of a weird juxtaposition with uh, what we're, what's going on right now in the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I th- so I thought that was an interesting twist, that they, they created this monster to help them, but then it shows what happens after the battle and you're stuck with the monster yeah. that you made. And you can't just kill Polgasari. Oh, no. That's some sort of commentary. I don't know, I don't know what, but... If, if only Kim Jong-un and Donald Trump would join together to watch this movie and receive... <laughs> The message of peace. Somebody tweet at Dennis Rodman. See if we can set it up. If I need, if I needed to, I'd cry, crawl inside a big old bell for both of those motherfuckers. <laughs> we'll talk about Which, that, Mike. What does the uh, what does crawling in the bell mean? Well, it's a euphemism. Uh, <laughs> Is it? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's literal, right? <laughs> no, someone else. <laughs> <laughs> so Amy climbs into the bell, the only piece of iron left in the entire city. And she, she's ringing the bell to get Polgasari's attention. And she climbs into it right as Polgasari reaches in. And he just he crushes it, which I thought right then that would kill Amy. She's done. No, Credits roll. No. Pulgas- oh. She's still alive inside the bell as Polgasari puts it into his, uh, his mouth and chomps down on it. She's does that kill her? I don't, <laughs> yeah, that kills I don't her. know because well, wait, because okay, Maybe? I have okay, no, it does not kill her. He swallows it, and <laughs> apparently, she's dead. She's not dead from, from there. She's I don't not know. dead yet. <laughs> he, he, I swear to God, he eats it, and then from inside of her bot, his body, he she talks to him, and that's what freaks him the fuck out. What? 
<laughs> what sense does that make? How could he hear her? I don't know. He did, though. And maybe it was her ghost or something, but she, she eats it, he swallows, and then you hear her whisper like, uh, please control your uh, something, something, something. Don't do this or whatever. I didn't write it down, unfortunately. She but prays she for him to be destroyed or leave to Earth, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's yes. when it cuts to the close-up of his face, and it gets all weird and wonky for a second because he's like freaked out about it yeah he looks like he's having an aneurysm <laughs> yeah doesn't he doesn't pulgasari like explode or like he, t- he turns into stone something? and explodes yeah. he becomes a ball well, of light no don't don't skip over this awesome explosion oh scene. that's the baby pulgasari that, that pops up out of the wreckage wow this we this this ending description is a mess <laughs> We bungled this one. This is as much of a mess as as this fucking ending of the movie. <laughs> he turns into a rock. I have he no explodes. idea what's going on. The big Pulgasari <laughs> cracks. It explodes. Paul, what is your interpretation of the ending to Pulgasari? Oh, my God. <laughs> no, just keep going. <laughs> we still got to talk about all the backstory. Keep going. So the, the, so the fucking movie's over now. I have no idea what happened. None of us. We all have different. I think we all watched a different movie. <laughs> that was that was like ninety five percent the same, but the last five minutes was completely different for each of us. Okay, so anyway, so there's a big pile of rubble because that's where Pogosari was. He exploded, and then a slow dolly back across the smoking rubble that's his body, and it is fucking cool as hell looking. And then, and then your your tummy tickles with glee because you see another little tiny Pogosari start walking around. Boop, 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 boop. But why? What like what? <laughs> because because then he turns into a, a beam of light or. Or a little ghost of light and goes into Amy's body and then brings her back to life. Wait, no, I thought um, that we was going to bring her back to oh, life. Geez. She just dies. It, she, she, it, her eyes are closed when it cuts the credit, but you, I would assume it means she comes back. I think they wanted to leave enough room for a sequel. But you could have it if she was still alive. <laughs> <laughs> and it, and if and if the director didn't like escape North Korea after that, well, he yeah. did escape North Korea after this. Yes, which I guess we should probably get into that because. Uh, I think uh, Jay, Jay, and maybe me. Well, Jay and I might uh, have another little special episode going more in, into more detail on this. But uh, well, if that's the case, then it's already aired. Yeah, oh. they've already heard this. All right. Well, then <laughs> maybe we'll 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 say some shit for the people who don't want to listen to that one. Yeah, touch it in case someone skips the mini episode teasers. Jay, Paul, either of you want to talk about it? What? Just basically the the director uh, Shin Sang Ok. I'm not. I'm. Sh- probably not pronouncing that right at all, um, was kidnapped, right? He was, he was at the top of his game in South Korea. He was a big-time filmmaker. He'd won all the awards, knew all the, the government, everybody, very popular. And he was with uh, him, his wife. They've made tons of movies together, and they're both kidnapped. Separately. She was kidnapped like five years before him. Was she? Yeah, she, yeah they got her yeah. first. Not they got her sorry. first. We don't need to get into details, but yeah, they were both kidnapped. Sorry. Yeah, they're both kidnapped. And because Kim Jong-il, who was a movie buff, and he was in charge of the cinematic arts in North Korea, wasn't happy with the state of North Korean films and decided, I'm going to go get the guy that can make some good movies for us. So he kidnapped him. And he made, yeah. uh, he made and, several movies. Uh, yeah, I actually, I, I have here, he actually made 17 movies in North Korea. Oh, wow. And one documentary. But <laughs> only five of them have him listed as he was only credited for five of them because they were released before his escape and all of the other 12 were released after his escape or they yeah. were still in production. Oh, that that's a bummer because after Polgarasi uh Polgasari Polgasari Polgas, after Polgasari came out and and he escaped Kim Jong Il wiped his name off of the directing credit as well. Huh. And yeah. when he found out about that, when the director found out that his name had been taken off Polkasari, he then wrote a remake of it that was made. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah, it's called a remake. It's called Gogameth, and you guys are going to be lucky if I pick this one because it's streaming somewhere. So guess who might watch that in season three of fucking B Movie Mania? Because it looks oh fucking insane. It's What's a, it called? Uh, the, the Adventures of Galgameth. Galgameth, and it yeah. It looks like a. It's a kid's fucking movie. So it's right up my alley. <laughs> of course it is. Of course it is. Rating time. I think uh, today's rating, we're going to uh, go on a score of 1 to 100. Pugasaurias! <laughs> Makes sense. Checks okay. out. Anyone want to start us off? Jay? So, I mean, due to the subtitling, uh, you know, it's it's not a casual watch. It's it's you know, as we talked about, the Amazon copy is 
pretty rough. You know, I, I think this is a little bit of a deep dive, but it, it's enjoyable. Uh, I, I had a good time with it. Um, I enjoy how he, Paul Gasari starts little and gets ginormous. That was cool. Lots of cool stuff happened. It's especially interesting if you do know the backstory behind the film and, and sort of all the stuff that happened around it. And I'm sure there's lots of stories around this film that will never make it out. I, I, I thought it was pretty fun. Um, so I'm going to go 74. Pogasarias! <laughs> all right, Mike. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I really think that overall, just in the general sphere around this movie, which Jay did touch on and we did throughout the whole thing, of just like all the story behind the making of it is is fascinating. And it's it's a real interesting piece of cinema in that it's 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 insanely unique the from because of what it is and how it was made. Uh besides that, like it's pretty entertaining. It, whether it's something that it seems cool or something that's funny, whether ironically or not, and like a couple other things that are just fascinating. Uh and I just had a real good time with this thing. So I'm going to say fucking 87 Pogasarias. Wow. Wow. All right, Paul, where does your score fit in? Um, I think Jay and Mike did a pretty good job there summing it up. I don't have much to add to that other than the lulls in the movie, you know, sort of the first half of it could have probably been tightened up a little bit. The runtime was, you know, maybe just a bit too long. But yeah, overall, I enjoyed it. I'm going to go 68. Paul Gossarias! All right. Good scores. I think uh, I'm going to land right in the middle, too. I think we're all pretty much, I think we're all pretty much in agreement here on this. The movie drags in some points, and I think the, uh, the story of the making of the movie is way more interesting than the movie itself. Yeah. But I think if yeah. you're, especially if you're like a kaiju fan, I think you eh, owe it to yourself great. to watch this. Cute it little guy. Because it is unique. <laughs> Cute little There's guy. There's a lot... Yeah, there's a lot to like about this movie and a little bit to bring it down a bit. So I'm going to go right in the middle with 70 Pugasarias. Seven? Seven? So, Just yeah, seven? Think my inter- seven. No, seven D. Seven zero. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I think you guys, I think my internet connection's cutting out again. Yeah, or something. Do, do you need to that. sort of redo the end of that, Chris? What's that? Say that again. Oh, God. Let's just wrap it up. <laughs> On the next episode of B-Movie Mania. This is going to be a movie that probably you haven't heard of, but it's one of those situations where I went deep down the Amazon Prime rabbit hole. No. And so mm. I'm pretty excited about no. it. So after I'm done reading the description, no. I hope that you guys will pretend to be really excited about it too. We'll see. Lainey McCoy begins an affair with a much younger man only to spin out of control in a jealous rage. Now it's up to her attorney to sort out the details of her disturbing story. It's called Fury Redo, and it's on Amazon Prime. Now be really excited about it. Oh, whoa, dude. I've heard so much about Fury. (laughs) Fury? Oh, wow. Oh. Hey, my internet connection cut out again. I have no idea what movie we're watching. Listen up, maniacs. Do you have a question or a comment? Would you like to uh, send some bourbon to Uncle Lloyd? You can contact the gang on Facebook at B Movie Mania. You can also drop them a line at bmoviemania.com. Reach out, touch them. They are touching themselves, and they might just reach back. I'm Lloyd Kaufman saying, see you next time on B Movie Mania. Woohoo! Is that the intro? <laughs> That's just the intro. I think it's the stinger. Pugasaria! 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 That probably actually will be the stinger. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs>